You're eating healthy, counting every calorie, saying no to your cravings, exercising almost every day, and yet the weight just won't come off. Here's what no one tells you. It's not your willpower or your metabolism. Chances are your body is experiencing insulin resistance. Most people think insulin resistance only affects people who have diabetes. But the fact is, one in three adults have insulin resistance and most don't even know it. Insulin resistance is a major cause of weight gain and obesity among other things. And until you fix it, your body will fight you to hold on to weight no matter how much you diet or exercise. If you are new here, hi, my name is Jeanette. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to talk about what insulin is and what it does, how insulin resistance happens, and simple things that you can start doing today to reverse insulin resistance. When it comes to losing weight, knowing how the body works, especially how it responds to food, is key. If we don't understand how what we eat affects us, we are more likely to make choices that work against our body, not with it. To understand insulin resistance, we first need to understand what insulin is and why it's important to your body. So what is insulin? Insulin is a hormone made by your pancreas. You have it, I have it, everyone has it. It's main job, regulating your blood sugar. It removes sugar from the bloodstream and allows it to go into the cells where it is used for energy. Basically, insulin's job is to keep blood sugar in your body in check. Now let's talk about what happens in your body after you eat, because this is gonna help us understand how insulin works and how resistant to it happens. When you have a meal with carbs, foods like rice, bread, fruits, or even something healthy like oatmeal, that food goes down to the intestines where it's broken down into glucose. Glucose is just a fancy medical word for blood sugar. From there, the blood sugar goes to your bloodstream, but your body doesn't like having too much sugar floating around in your blood. It wants your blood sugar in a very tight range, usually between 80 and 100 milligram per deciliter. So after you eat and the sugar in your bloodstream rises, your body quickly signals the pancreas to release insulin. After insulin is released from the pancreas, it travels to the cells in your body, usually in the muscle cells as well as the liver. There, it acts like a key that unlocks the doors so that glucose can go into the cells. Once glucose or blood sugar move into the cells, your cells use the glucose for energy, your blood sugar goes down, and everything stays in balance. When you eat more than you need, your body uses what it needs right now and takes the rest, any sugar that it doesn't need at the moment, it turns it into something called glycogen, and then it stores it in the muscle cells as well as the liver. Think of glycogen as leftovers that you keep in the fridge. You don't need it right now, but you can warm it up and use it later when you get hungry again. That's what the body does to sugar that it doesn't need at the moment. It turns it into glycogen and puts it away in the muscle cells as well as the liver. But here's the thing, the storage space in your muscles and your liver, AKA your fridge, are very limited. Once these storages are full, your body is like, well, I'm out of space, but there is still way too much sugar in the blood. I need to put it somewhere because if that blood sugar stays in the bloodstream, it can cause serious problems, high blood sugar and even a stroke or coma. So your body then takes that extra sugar and turns it into fat and then store that fat in your fat cells for long-term use. I like to think about fat storage like a deep freezer. It's a place where you keep food that you don't need right away. It is for long-term use. Now, your body likes to eat fresh food. It wants to use fresh fuel, not food from the storage or the leftovers. So it's always going to prioritize using fresh glucose. If it ever runs out of glucose, then it would go to the glycogen storage and get energy from there. If the glycogen storage are out, then it would go to the fat storage. It's like running out of fresh food and have to warm up leftover food in your fridge. And when you run out of that, then you would go to your deep freezer and get food from there. So that's what your body does. It uses fresh glucose first. If it ever runs out of fresh glucose, then it would go to glycogen. 
if the glycogen storage run out are empty, then it would go to the fat cells and use fat for energy. But the thing is, the body you rarely ever get to use the stored energy because we make it so easy for our bodies to always have fresh glucose available, especially if you're eating high amounts of carbs and or eating frequently. Just to recap, when we eat food, especially carbohydrates, the food goes down to the stomach where the body breaks it down and turn it into glucose. Glucose is a fancy word for sugar. The sugar then travels from the intestines to the bloodstream, but the body doesn't like too much sugar in the bloodstream. So it triggers the pancreas to release insulin. Insulin goes and open doors on the cells in the muscles. Once insulin opens those doors, the sugar in our blood goes to the muscle cells where it gets used for energy if the body needs it right away. If the body doesn't need it, it turns that sugar into something called glycogen and then it stores the glycogen in the muscle cells and takes some of it and stores it in the liver. Now, the glycogen storage in the muscle cells and the liver are very limited. If there is more sugar left after the glycogen storage is full, the body says, I have to do something with this sugar. So it starts turning that extra sugar into, into fat. So the body does all of this to accomplish two things to prevent buildup of blood sugar in your bloodstream and also to make sure that the cells are getting fuel to keep you alive, growing, healthy, healing, to keep the body functioning smoothly and efficiently. This is what the normal process looks like. Now keep in mind that this is going on all day, every day. Every time you eat, the body does this. Every time you eat breakfast, the body takes that sugar, turns it into glucose. Glucose goes into your bloodstream. Insulin comes, open the door for the glucose to travel to the cells. If it's not used right away, it's turned into glycogen. If there's any more blood sugar left, it turns that into fat. This is a cycle. This happens when you eat breakfast. It happens when you eat a morning snack, when you eat lunch, when you eat an afternoon snack. When you eat dinner and if you eat bedtime snack, this is happening. If you are eating frequent meals, this means your body is constantly flooded with glucose. The pancreas is constantly releasing insulin. With this happening every day, over time, your cells get overexposed to insulin. And that is when the problem starts. With insulin constantly running to the cells, to unlock the door for glucose to get in to the cells. It's like someone ringing your doorbell 20 times a day. Eventually you stop answering. Do you guys remember the days when telemarketers used to come knocking on the door to sell you stuff, whether it was knives or high speed internet or something? I personally remember that. And it got to the point where whenever I heard a knock on the door, I would peek to see who it is, and if it was the telemarketers, I just basically ignored them, acted like I wasn't even home. This is exactly what the cells start doing to insulin whenever it comes knocking on the door. Your cells just stop answering the door. They stop listening to insulin. This is what is called insulin resistance. Your cells become resistant to insulin. So when your cells stop listening to insulin, it's like insulin becomes very weak. It's no longer opening the doors for glucose to come in. Meanwhile, you continue to eat carbohydrates and the sugar is flooding into the bloodstream. The pancreas has no idea what's going on over there with the cells ignoring insulin. All it knows is the blood sugar is building up. We need to get it into the cells. So it produces more insulin trying to force blood sugar into the cells. It's like needing for people to do the job that used to take two. Insulin resistance is basically a vicious cycle of having high insulin levels, having cells that are now responding to the insulin, a pancreas that keeps pumping up more and more insulin. This leads to more fat storage. It means your body is constantly turning the sugar into fat. This puts your body in a constant fat storage mode. Insulin resistance doesn't happen overnight. It builds slowly. 
meal by meal, snack by snack, over weeks, months, and even years. You may not notice it at first, but then the weight won't come off no matter how little you eat or how much you exercise. You are tired all the time, constantly craving sugar, holding on to belly fat, having brain fog, and being moody all the time. The signs are there, and they show up long before there's ever a diagnosis for type 2 diabetes. But here's the good news. You can reverse insulin resistance. And it starts by understanding what triggers it in the first place. Here are four real life triggers and four practical strategies that you can apply to your life to start turning things around today. The first trigger is eating too often. Eating all day means your insulin levels never get a break. Your cells never get time to reset. Try this, give your body space between meals. Start with a 12 hour fast, intermittent fasting. Try not to eat anything between dinner and breakfast the next morning. Cut out unnecessary snacking, refined carbs and sugar, things like white rice, pasta, cereal, bread, sweetened drinks, and even fruit juices. For my Africans out there, fufu, plantain. These spike your blood sugar fast, and that means big insulin spikes over and over again throughout the day. Try this. Swipe in whole fiber-rich foods. Think veggies, healthy fats and protein with every meal. Those are the best foods to keep your blood sugar stable. Three, lack of physical movement. If you're inactive, if you're not moving, exercising, your muscles don't use the sugar in your blood. The sugar stays around longer, which means more insulin has to be produced to take care of the sugar. Try this, take a walk after each meal. Do some strength or lightweight training. You don't need to become a bodybuilder. Just move your body. When you do that, the body will start burning the sugar rather than storing it. Number four, poor sleep and chronic stress. Not sleeping enough or being constantly stressed raises cortisol. Cortisol messes with your blood sugar and insulin balance. Try this. Try getting seven to eight hours of sleep each night and find small ways to reduce stress. Do little things like deep breathing, taking short walks, journaling, meditating, practicing gratitude. All these are small things that can make a big difference. The best thing is you don't need to turn your life around overnight. Every small change you make counts. Walking after dinner, eating more protein, spacing out your meals. These small things can help you start reversing insulin resistance. And when you do, you will feel your energy go up, your mental health will improve, your cravings will go down, your bloating might go away. Eventually, your body will start to burn fat and the weight will start coming off naturally. If this video helped you understand your body better, please be sure to like it. Leave a comment with any question or suggestion that you might have. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it when I post new videos. Also, stay tuned for the next video in which I will be going through a simple daily routine to help you lower your insulin level, reset your metabolism, and help you feel better without doing the extremes. As always, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this video till the end. I will see you in the next one. Ciao! I believe that, like anything in life, understanding the process is just as important as taking action.